I would now like to provide an assessment of the growth and the inflation situation. First, let me focus on global growth in brief. The global economy continues to remain fragile. World trade is decelerating amidst global tide of protectionism. Despite significant restoration of global supply chains, factors like elevated debt levels, lingering geopolitical hostilities, and extreme weather conditions aggravate the risks to global growth and inflation outlook. Easing of inflation in advanced economies has led to expectations of an early end to the monetary policy tightening cycle, shoring up market sentiments. Sovereign bond yields are softening as markets are not factoring in any further rate hikes. Coming to domestic growth, economic activity in India exhibited buoyancy in the second quarter of this year, aided by strong domestic demand. GDP growth, as you would know, posted a robust growth of 7.6% in the second quarter of this year, that is 2023-24, driven largely by investment and government consumption. Turning to the third quarter, two-thirds of rubby sowing has been completed despite late harvest of kharif crops in some states. Manufacturing sector gained strength with easing input cost pressures and pickup in demand conditions. Eight core industries recorded healthy growth in October and continued their high growth since June this year. The Purchasing Managers Index, that is the PMI for manufacturing, rose in November. The services sector buoyancy has remained intact as reflected in the high, frequ high frequency indicators which the Reserve Bank monitors. GST collections at rupees 1.68 lakh crore in November 2023 were also buoyant. Services PMI displayed healthy expansion in November. In my statement, I, there is a lot of data available which I have put in the footnote, so those of you who are uh, interested can have a look at the footnotes. The entire data in support of whatever I am saying is available in the footnotes. On the demand side, households consumption is supported by durable urban demand and gradual turnaround in rural demand as reflected in sales of fast moving consumer goods that is FMCG and other indicators. Festival related demand is also spurring household discretionary consumption in the third quarter, that is in the current quarter. Investment activity continues to be aided by buoyancy in public sector capex. This is also reflected in strong growth in steel consumption, cement production and imports of capital goods. Capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector continues to remain above the long period average. Investments in fixed assets by listed private sector manufacturing companies also registered healthy growth in the first half of 23-24, primarily driven by key industries such as petroleum, steel, chemicals and cement. The total flow of resources to the commercial sector from banks and other sources at rupees 17.6 lakh crore during the current financial year so far is significantly higher than that of last year which was at rupees 14.5 lakh crore. Despite weaknesses in external demand, both goods and services exports returned to positive territory during the month of October, in October this year. Looking ahead, Private consumption should gain support from gradual improvement in rural demand, strengthening of manufacturing activity, and continued buoyancy in services. The healthy twin balance sheets of banks and corporates, high capacity utilization, continuing business optimism, and government's thrust on infrastructure spending should propel private sector capex. The drag from external demand is also expected to moderate with a turnaround in merchandise and services exports. The protracted geopolitical turmoil, 
volatility in global financial markets and growing geoeconomic fragmentations, however, pose risks to the outlook. Now, taking all these factors into consideration, real GDP growth for the current year, that is 2023-24, is projected at 7%. I repeat, real GDP growth is projected at 7% for the current year, with the third quarter at 6.5%, and the fourth quarter at 6%. Real GDP growth for next year, and we have provided the figures for the three quarter, first three quarters of next year. So real GDP growth for the first quarter of 24-25 is projected at 6.7%, for Q2 at 6.5%, and Q3 at 6.4%. The risks are evenly balanced. I would now like to turn to inflation. Food inflation, which was in double digits in July, has since then moderated to 6.2% in October with correction in vegetable prices. Fuel inflation slipped into deflation since September, primarily, primarily reflecting the sharp fall in LPG prices in end August. The disinflation in core gathered momentum during September-October and reached levels last seen in the fourth quarter of 2019-20 due to the combined effect of policy rate increases and reduction in cost post pressures across core goods and services. Going ahead, inflation outlook would be considerably influenced by uncertain food prices. High-frequency food price indicators point to an increase in prices of key vegetables which may push CPI inflation higher in the near term. The ongoing rubby sowing progress for key crops like wheat, spices and pulses needs to be closely monitored. Elevated global sugar prices is also a matter of concern. On the positive side, global commodity prices, particularly agricultural commodities, have softened except rice. For highly, import for highly import dependent food items like edible oils, international prices continue to remain soft. Domestic milk prices have stabilized. Proactive supply side interventions by the government are also containing domestic food price pressures. Crude oil has softened considerably, though it may remain volatile. Taking into account these factors and on the assumption of normal monsoons, CPI inflation is projected at 5.4% for the current year, that is 2023-24, with the third quarter at 5.6% and the fourth quarter at 5.2%. CPI inflation, and here again we are giving for the first three quarters of next year, CPI inflation for the Q1 24-25 is projected at 5.2%, Q2 at 4%, and Q3 at 4.7%. The risks are evenly balanced. Now, <clears throat> now what do these inflation and growth conditions mean for monetary policy. Let me provide our assessment. We have made significant progress in bringing down inflation to below 5% in October 2023, despite occasional blips due to intermittent supply shocks. The summer of 2022 is behind us. Our policy of prioritizing inflation over growth, hiking the interest rates, that is policy rate by 250 basis points in a calibrated manner and draining out excess liquidity have worked well alongside supply side measures taken by the government to bring about this disinflation. The fact that core inflation has also tended, has also trended lower and household inflation expectations have become better anchored gives us the confidence and conviction that monetary policy is doing its job. On the other hand, growth remains resilient and robust, surprising everyone on the upside. Notwithstanding this progress, 
the target of 4% CPI is yet to be reached and we have to stay the course. Headline inflation continues to be volatile due to multiple supply side shocks which have become more frequent and intense. The trajectory of food inflation needs to be closely monitored. Intermittent vegetable price shocks could once again push, push up the headline inflation in November and as I said possibly December. While monetary policy would look through such one-off shocks, monetary policy has to stay alert to the risk of such shocks becoming generalized and derailing the ongoing disinflation process. In the midst of these uncertainties, monetary policy has to remain actively disinflationary to ensure a durable alignment of headline inflation to the target rate of 4% while supporting growth.